Here we are, February 5th. Uh, the meeting is being held on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Squamish Nations. And the meeting is being live streamed, and the audio and visual recording will also be available for viewing after the meeting. And the footage of the meeting may be viewed inside and outside of Canada. Uh, just to note uh, that Tr Trustee Oliver Hansen is unable to make it tonight, and he's out of town. But we do have a quorum with uh, the rest of our members here. Uh, on the uh, meeting to quorum, just to uh, go over that, uh, that we have a strong committee uh, here at the board to have the quorum. Uh, this includes the responsibility of committee members to conduct themselves in the future quorum and professionalism. As chair of the committee, it's my responsibility to see that the quorum is maintained. And to do that, I ask that all members and delegates request to speak through the chair. That civility towards others is maintained. Supporter <laughs> representatives and trustees share perspectives and participate in debate. Um, staff will be able to submit corrective reports without influence or pressure. As appreciated. Community members who carry out personal inflammatory, accusatory language and actions, and that community members, trustees, representatives, and staff present themselves in a national and permanent manner. All right, so moving along on uh, the agenda, number one delegations, there are none today. Yes. Yesterday I went to um, Mackenzie for a reading recovery uh, workshop, and I first of all, thank those people for inviting me. It was fabulous. But my point of personal privilege is that Adrian was there. And I think that that's so important that the people who work at this office or other offices get out to, to be with the teachers who are doing stuff in, in classrooms. And Adrian is always there. He thought that almost that everyone that I go to, Adrian's there. So I, I really appreciate that, that work, Adrian. Okay, uh, moving on to two information items. Um, first on the agenda is 2.1. It's a wellness and employee engagement update uh, from the uh, Director of Employee Services, Lorelai Russell. Okay. Um, through the chair, uh, we submitted a report in your package, um, a memo, item 2.1, and I'd just like to focus on a couple highlights. Um, the first is that we have 12 employees who um, are uh, consistent of some HR as well as about nine employees from our different employee groups, um, both unionized and uh, association, who will be taking a five-day intensive training with the Mental Health Commission. And it's basically a train the trainer. So these 12 individuals are going to learn um, the curriculum so that they will be able to deliver uh, an eight hour manager training or a four hour employee training in the future. And I just want to um, highlight a couple um, uh, things about this training. Um, so basically the training seeks to normalize um, mental well-being and they introduce um, what they call a mental health continuum and it's on page two of your report. And I just wanted to talk about that just for a few minutes. Um, that basically uh, the training will focus on how everyone uh, at different stages of their life can move along this continuum. So you can be in a healthy state, you can be in a reactive state, you can be injured or you can be ill and you're not there 100% of the time like you're for your whole life. And so basically they're giving um, some symptoms of what that might look like for someone who's in each of those um, four phases. And then at the bottom, some actions that could be taken and so basically this um, is sort of the meat and the bones of the training so that when we can present it to managers, it reduces the stigma of someone who might have, uh, you know, be reacting or be injured to understand that everyone can go through this depending on what's going on in their life at different stages and that they can uh, go back to a healthy state with help and with support. Um, our plan is that after we have these 12 uh, employees trained that we will be on professional um, development days offering an employee workshop and they will help co-facilitate um, so that um, employees will have someone from their own union 
um, representation or association representation there as part of the training. So we're excited uh, about that. Um, I think that we've completed our principal training, and so now we want to get into the employee training and rolling it out to um, those interested in the district and learning about this. And the second thing that I want to highlight is our um, health expo that we're doing on a, the professional development day at Kitsilano on February 14th. We're very excited about this. Um, we will be hosting five workshops, which will each run three times um, during the day so that people can uh, choose which one they want. And one is called Sacred Teachings of the Land, and it will be facilitated by Sankula Weiss. Um, she's from the Squamish Nation. And this workshop is going to provide a deeper understanding of the sacred relationship between the people, the land, and the water. And Sakula is going to share her knowledge on Indigenous plant ecosystems and how the language of her ancestors um, and the Squamish language impact um, health and, and the land. So we're quite excited to offer that. Uh, we'll also have a workshop on self-care for caregivers. So we know that we have employees who um, have either aging parents or young children or someone who's ill in their family that they are having to look after and can experience burnout because of that. So we're going to have a special workshop for anyone interested in that and attending that. Our third workshop is on getting restful sleep and we know that sleep is very important to mental well-being and overall health. Um, our fourth one is thinking traps and that is when sometimes we have a lot of negative self-talk and it just like goes around in circles and so it's basically strategies of how to recognize when you might be um, speaking to yourself in this way and and stop that. So I think that that is um, it's going to be an interesting uh, workshop. This one is on financial planning fundamentals because we recognize that um, to be a total well-being, it includes the emotional, the physical, um, psychological and um, financial can definitely add um, stress and anxiety to people's lives. So those are five shops that are going to be running, um, as I said, two in the morning, one in the afternoon. And then uh, employees will also have the option to have um, a biometric screening, which will be provided by Shoppers Drug Mart. We'll have 10 pharmacists that will be, um, each one will be in a separate classroom so that it will be private for employees. And they will have the option to sign up for 20 minutes and they will have a little blood prick if they're willing and if the uh, pharmacist will be able to let them know. Um, they'll measure things like heart, uh, like blood pressure, and uh, the blood prick will be able to indicate if there's anything that they might be, that they should get uh, checked out with um, their family doctor or with the clinic, uh, as well as they're going to do boss body, boss, no, body mass body index, mass. sorry, mm -hmm. uh, measurements. Um, and um, we're offering, <laughs> we're offering this as a way um, for some people uh, who don't have a family doctor who aren't going for regular uh, physicals to have this opportunity. And we also in the gym are have 16 um, set up. That's why we're calling it an uh, Expo. So mm -hmm. Renaud Chappelle will be there as our um, third party benefit administrator. Um, we'll have LifeWorks there, which is our employee family assistance program, also part of Morneau Chappelle. Uh, Pacific Blue Cross will be there to answer any questions. Uh, we have an Endless Savings and More program, which is um, some employee discounts um, that are available. We have BC211, which is uh, a municipal um, and provincial program uh, that gives information, the PC Bereavement <coughs> Helpline, the Chiropractic Association, Canadian Blood Services, Canadian Cancer Society, the Canadian Mental Health Association, Credit Counseling Society, Crisis Centre of BC, Health Canada, Mood Disorders Association, Pain BC, and West Coast Child Care Resource. So we're hoping that this will provide a full day 
um, our employees were expecting about 500 to attend. Um, I just wanted to really appreciate the investment that that the employer is putting into employee well-being um, as well as working to overcome the stigma of mental health, which we still know is a very powerful stigma. Um, and, you know, the causes of the disturbance in people's mental health, there's lots of studies and lots of I suppose uh, theories about that, modern living, loss of community, loss of extended family, things that really are beyond the purview of the employer to fix. Um, so I think that's a challenge for the employer in that sense. I mean, we certainly welcome all the supports, but when the things that are causing it are sort of outside of, you know, other than working conditions, that's something we can all work together on. So I think it would be interesting. I mean, there's always a privacy factor, but over time, if there's a way to, to know if there are key causes to, um, I don't know what the right expression is mental health disturbances understanding it is on the spectrum and we can all be in different places at, at different times that um, identifying that and even working with the city the broader community if it is about people's loss of community or extended family maybe it isn't but you know looking at it past um, just the employer because it's a it's a community issue I think for all of us um, but certainly it is welcomed by our members and we do know that it um, has a lot of positive impact. I'm just going to respond. I mean, we could check. I think what the stats that we're able to provide generally is what's being used through EPA, mm -hmm. not the individual. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Maybe we can ask Monosha Pal if they have some tracking or some uh, stats on why people are accessing it. We can we can check with them. I have a question. Um, the ministry. Uh, there a couple of ministries have. Announced some funding around mental health and student support. Has any of that sort of been made available yet to, to school districts at this level, like not post secondary, but through the chair? Um, the money that came was for students, and so there was there were mental uh, health toolkits in sites. Mm -hmm. I think that was where the funding had been directed towards. Um, it wasn't a, a large amount, but it was sufficient, I think, to try to get some toolkits. In this is something we're doing as a district for staff. This, this is, is for employees. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Comments? Mm -hmm. uh, 2.2 staffing and recruitment update with uh, associate superintendent. Thank you, Chair. Um, just uh, sort of to kind of give a different uh, report this time to give you an idea of what we have in terms of um, how many we have on call. The report was done and the dates were as of January the um, 15th. Uh, on the first page of the report, I, we explained that we did start a, a third cycle of our EA program and I'm pleased to announce that we actually started another EA cohort this week. So we had enough students <coughs> that, through Burnaby and Vancouver that we could run another one out of Garibaldi. So we have a group that will that started in January that will graduate in May. And then this cohort, which starts in February, there were 29 students in this cohort and that group will graduate in June. So they will be students in our uh, practicums in our schools. And so we're pleased that that combined, you know, last time we got about 40 out of the, the two cohorts, so we're hopeful that we can get some more uh, through this cohort. So this double cohort again, so we were quite pleased that we were able to do a second intake. And then on, uh, on the second page of the report, uh, I just wanted to point out um, a couple of things. So on the teachers K to 12, the number of on call staff that of course, actually all on call staff numbers continually fluctuate because of how many go into postings and whatnot. Um, for example, right now we have about 47 teacher uh, temporary contracts that will be ending in March. So those 47 people will go back onto the on call list. And then we have 72 temporary contracts in teaching that will end in June. Those folks will go back on the on call list. We have 10 more that we're signing on Friday. So again, it's, it's a, number that is ever changing um, are the SSAs. A, a number of them are being hired, but they're going straight into jobs. A lot of them are just going straight into jobs. So that's 
sort of depleting our on-call pool, so we're continually adding to there as, as positions become available. And, and maybe Adrian will be able to explain this a little bit more, but the teachers and adult education, it says our continuing FTE is 22, but we have 64 that replaced them. But because of the nature of adult ed and the blocks, and, and it's not a full day, so it's not that there are 64 people waiting to, for the call. They, a lot of them are currently in assignments, and so it's when they're available. So, because we are still recruiting an adult education, so it's not that it's that kind of ratio <laughs> that they're absent all the time. It's really about are they? Do we have people available at the time that the absence is occurring? So, so I want to sort of point that out. Um, the other thing with the back to the other teaching is we had about over 50 remedy postings. And so we were fortunate that many of them have filled. We still have a couple that uh, a few that we're working on, but that has also depleted our um, on call list. So that again, we're filling jobs. We're doing pretty good in the filling of jobs, but it's the on call list. We still are, are focused in a lot of our attention on. We are in Ottawa next week. Mm -hmm. Yes, Saturday. 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 Thank you. And Saturday. Montreal and next Monday. So through the chair, so two in Ottawa, a French event, a French career fair, and an English one on uh, two days next week. And the on our family day, we'll be at McGill University in the French and English. Yes, and we're generally pretty successful in, in recruiting in those ones and building relationships. And, and uh, so that's for that piece. Um, and I think that was it that I wanted to point out from this report. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Carmen, for that. Um, we're happy to see the number of uh, new hires from the SFU mm -hmm. cohort. Um, just one question around um, failure to fills because we're starting to hear that happening more and reorganization of resource teachers. Is there any idea of how often that's happening now, like in the last month or so? So through the chair, it seems sort of since the snow, it's been a little bit more. Um, you know, I haven't done the full stats, but you know, looking at the number, we had a lot of teachers that increased through remedy uh, availability. So those days that they were on our on-call list, they're no longer available. So I, I kind of need to do a, a <coughs> check and see what the availability is of individuals, but that was sort of our issue. And a lot of people that were on our on-call list and temporary jobs, they're in postings, they're no longer available for the Tuesday, Thursday and that. So it seems like since January-ish, there's been some, some more than, than what we've experienced because we have been successful and we haven't had the, the shortages like we had, but it seems like it could be because we had this big 50 postings over and above what our normal posting is, it, could, it would definitely have an impact. And I mean, along the same lines around failure to fill, we are here are starting to hear from schools again. We don't have numbers, and so it's helpful to have exactly what the number is of people um, being called off their prep block to cover for somebody who's absent. Um, and wondering about recruitment of, especially we hear um, tech ed teachers um, sometimes go to work sick because there's nobody to replace them, and home ec teachers feel, I think, very similarly. So especially in those two specialty areas, and how recruitment is going in those particular areas. Tech studies is a challenging area. And uh, I, I did send an email. We did post, because we are going uh, across the country, we did post for some Mandarin jobs, uh, home, I think we did home ec, uh, five elementary, five, set, uh, five intermediate, sorry, primary intermediate. So we actually have permanent contracts going in hand with to these recruitment fairs with the hopes of um, potentially bringing some people back because you know that that guarantee of employment that guarantee of benefits is sometimes uh, a, a good thing and, and something that other districts don't always necessarily offer questions comments uh, i do have a question i noticed on the um, bsp website there was a posting about the french teachers from france so I, I, can we get an update as to how that's going Sure, uh, through the chair. So last year, as you know, we did sign the agreement with the academies in South France. So we did, we are trying to work through with the ministry to do actual exchanges. So at the time being, we hired one person uh, for this school year and the additional person was hired as a French language assistant through a separate agreement. So those are two people that are working with us. We hired somebody just yesterday who's coming with us part time for the spring. So as available as our jobs are, 
uh, transferring from Europe to BC is not as easy as we want it to be. Uh, there are totally different legislations and getting right into our work now. We met recently with the TRB that tried to come up with an agreement to give not letters of understanding, but they try to find a way that we can accommodate uh, our overseas teachers who are here for either a short term or long term basis with the hope, of course, of increasing <coughs> of them staying long term. Like the one teacher who came, she came with her two sons who are in her English school in the city. <coughs> a job for two. So they're looking to settle here if they can. But there are other ministries and uh, bureaucracies that are involved, including immigration, of course. So although we are continuing our efforts, uh, it is not without the challenge. Mm -hmm. so. And have any teachers from here gone there? So not through our agreement, no, because you know, the similar challenge <coughs> we have express interest. So it is certainly something that we are working on on a regular basis, but it's, it's not as simple as we want it to be. Unfortunately. Right. Sorry? It never is. <laughs> we are good. trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that won't hold you. Okay, seeing no other questions, comments, let's move on to 2.3. Uh, Snow Code News and Report from Sosa Superintendent. Thank you. So I thought since we just recently had a snow event that I would sort of kind of let the stakeholders know sort of what it encompasses when we experience that. Um, so just so we know, some more the superintendent does make a decision because it is the superintendent's decision. Um, we are kind of receiving text messages starting at four in the morning to determine and checking in. We all have our positions and our jobs, what we need to review so that we can give all the information for the superintendent to make her decision before 6 a.m. And uh, so we check the road conditions. We have staff that check road, road conditions, busing conditions, employees, uh, you know, reporting absences. We're looking, so we have people out and about, and then the superintendent makes the decision, and then we go into essential services mode, which is basically we need an administrator and uh, operations crew on site. And then we have, of course, all of our um, amazing staff that have, are doing all the snow clearing. So that is a, uh, an amazing, a huge task. And on the closure day, but you have to remember that if the snow starts on Sunday and you're still going to school on Monday, you're still going to school on Tuesday, all of the folks that are operations crews, our QP407, all of them that are doing <coughs> snow clearing, they're tired. <laughs> they're done with the snow. And so, you know, you can only do so much snow clearing. But um, so we did have that event. And, you know, we had one last year, which was uh, the first time in probably a decade that I could recall. Um, so we did it this year. And, uh, you know, we, we worked pretty good. Everyone was safe. We did have students almost appear at almost all of our sites, which was, uh, you know, a couple of kids. And of course, that's why it's important for uh, either an administrator or a district. Some, in some cases, we had a district staff uh, be deployed or moved around some people so that we can make sure our kids are um, back into their guardians safely. And so we just really wanted to thank everyone uh, on behalf of the senior team. And I know that the, the trustees as well are very appreciative to all the, you know, the grounds and material <coughs> services of 407, our administrators, our operations, all of IOUE, um, our education st center staff that we were, uh, that came in to make sure that everything was running smoothly, our directors. So there's a lot of people that are still behind the scenes working um, to make sure that everything is, is safe for our, um, for our sites and uh, we thank everyone because it is a big undertaking when we're dealing with snow. <laughs> I'm great and I want to acknowledge uh, the staff and how smooth it appeared, you know, for, to everybody. I think it was paying attention that things went really well. So well done. We've got it down. Yes. Thank you. Through the chair, just to add as well, when the decisions being made, um, we work very collaboratively with the other metro school districts. So we're very live to what all those districts within the region are also doing. So as well as liaising here with our own internal staff, we ex we liaise heavily with those in other districts to see what they're thinking and what they're planning at the same time too. We realize the interconnectedness of all of our districts. Sure. Any comments, questions? All right. Moving to discussion items. Uh, we have a couple of things that we want to uh, discuss, <laughs> bring to the table. Um, so I thought I'd bring up novel coronavirus because that seems to be um, on lots of minds right now. And I just wanted to, it, and it is evolving by hour. 
and I just wanted the stakeholders to know that we message as soon as we get um, messaging that we need to follow. But on all public health matters, um, with the district follows the directions of Vancouver Coastal Health and the Provincial Health Officer. So those are where we get our directions. We are not making any decisions or anything in isolation. It is at their advice and direction. Um, at this time, uh, the public <coughs> health authorities have continued have continued to advise us that the, the risk of novel coronavirus in BC schools still remains low. So it's still a, a low risk factor at this time. It's actually annual cold and flu season right now. So that mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, <laughs> yes, uh, that is really what is is a lot of happening. So we're just reminding people of standard school practices. <laughs> Prop, you know, proper and frequent washing of your hands. You know, that is the best defense against everything. Um, resp uh, respiratory etiquette for coughing. Um, and then just our staff, our operations crew are doing their seasonal cleaning and we are actually having our coastal health um, are going through their uh, inspections right now too. So that's on top of everything else. So, and we thank our operations crew for keeping our site so, uh, so uh, well maintained. And um, principals and, and, and administrators, they monitor uh, absenteeism. So if we do get some high percentages, we're notified and then we would contact the provincial health and the bank of the coastal health. So we do have strategies in place. And again, that information, anything that's coming to us, we, we would share with the field and the stakeholders. I just thought comments or questions. Again, through the chair, just um, to give accolades to the team that we have here at the district office that does meet, as Carmen said, last couple of days hourly, just to stay on top of the messaging that is coming out from the provincial health um, office. And also that we are very fortunate. We have some extraordinary expertise on our team that also helps lead some of the provincial initiatives. So we are very dialed and in tune with the latest information and also help feed information back through the ministries um, that are involved the Ministry of Education just to let them know what's actually happening operationally and what our schools are providing us as feedback so that the ministry is aware of what the implications are in the school district. So thank you Carmen and your team members for your work. I, I just have a question. I had a parent um, contact me um, about uh, hand sanitizing gel which I understand Richmond has done but I from what I understand doesn't necessarily work with viruses anyway so I'm just curious is, has that been an inspection and then not necessarily recommended I'm hearing it's, yeah it's not necessary it's not happening. soap and water is always going to be your best bet okay good so let's move on to there's no um, items for approval for number four number five any information item requests from the floor okay. great so that leaves us to um, our next meeting which is going to be on Wednesday April 8th at 5 p.m. And, uh, spring yeah, <laughs> uh, meeting adjourned. Bye, Cody. Thanks for everybody for coming to the first room. <laughs>